Hey everyone, it's Desi Chang, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Angel Care Baby Breathing Monitor. And although it works 100% fine in terms of monitor your, monitoring your baby's breathing, it sucks at everything else. Currently, this is the only product on the market that monitors your baby's breathing with a sensor pad that is underneath the bottom of the mattress. The great thing I like about that is that there's nothing else. There's uh, nothing else to obscure your baby, nothing they have to turn on or strap on. There are other products that you can either, you know, strap on something to their ankle or clip something to their uh, diaper. However, the problem about that is, you know, if they flip onto their tummy or, you know, they kick something off, it's really inconsistent so this is i really really like this product because of that reason there is one other product that is completely touchless and just relies on um wireless technology and uh, the only bad thing about that is that it is much much pricier than this it is i think more than double the price so that is one thing to definitely consider so how does this thing work? So as soon as you put your baby on there and you have everything on, it senses the baby's breathing motion. And you can see it and it detects it on your monitor with a green light. So if there's a green light, there is some type of minor motion. Now, if your baby does stop moving or breathing, or if you pick up the baby and there's no baby there, in about 20 seconds, it will alarm on the camera as well as the monitor. So unfortunately, 20 seconds is a long time and you cannot change the duration. So that is another negative feature I didn't like about this. The other annoying thing is if you don't, if you forget to pause the camera or the alarm and you pick up your baby, it's going to start alarming even though you're in the other room or changing a diaper or something like that. So you will have to make sure that you pause it first before you pick up your baby. It is annoying and it takes some time getting used to it. I've definitely forgot it many, many times, but eventually you do get the hang of it. First of all, it is touchscreen and it is the worst touchscreen I have ever used out of any device at all. You're constantly trying to touch the buttons, but sometimes it doesn't, doesn't sense it. So you're button smashing and sometimes you've pressed it too many times and it's just absolutely terrible. Another terrible thing about the touchscreen is that if you want to pick it up, usually you just pick it up like that. But because it is touchscreen, you might actually touch something and then touch a button and they will trigger something or pause something or go into a different setting and I hate it. So I always have to make sure whenever I pick up this monitor that I have to kind of pick it up from the back, right? Like that. Annoying. Let's talk about the video quality. It sucks. It's probably the worst video quality camera I have ever seen in my life. And it's terrible. And if, if there's low light, like you have, if you have a dim room or anything like that, it's even worse. So I would highly not recommend this for the video capabilities. The next thing that sucks about this camera uh, is that it has a very narrow field of view, meaning that if it's focused on your baby, but if your baby just moves out of frame, you, you won't be able to see it. So you're gonna have to move the camera higher and slightly further away, uh, just so you can see a little bit more of the crib. Which leads me to my next thing, uh, there is no pan or tilt. It's literally a physical thing that you have to physically aim with your hand, which sucks because you know, if your baby moves, it would be nice if you could just, on the monitor, just press left or right or down or up. This does not have that. And the final thing that really ticks me off is how the camera mounts. Although it comes with this nice table stand and this magnetic thing that you can just quickly latch, you know, the, a table may not be the perfect height and it really wasn't. So I actually had to MacGyver my own solution to mount it onto a light stand and to position it at, a, at an area above the crib where I can see my baby-ish. And, it, and that I, it was tall enough for my wife and myself to pause and unpause the uh, camera. And the worst thing is that the power cable that comes with this system is not long enough. It's like five feet too short. It's, it dangles. So if you mount it at like, even like, you know, five feet high, the power cable dangles. And I actually had to connect it to a power bar, to another power bar 
to connect it to my wall outlet. Now I have the Summer Infant Zoom HD, I also have the Motorola system and they both come with the power cables that are very, very long and enough to kind of stretch around your crib and behind to reach whatever power outlet that's, you know, obviously not in the perfect position. But yeah, it was just really, really frustrating with this system. Now, when comparing this versus the Summer Infant HD Zoom, as well as the Motorola system, the Motorola system, the only thing I like about it is that it actually comes with a star grip. It actually has a quarter inch screw at the bottom of the camera, and you can put this star grip here, and you can mount that star grip onto anything because it has moldable legs that you can kind of just wrap around or, or do anything with, make your own table tripod or something like that. Now, the Summer Infant Zoom doesn't have that, however, it has really, really good picture quality. The HD is really crystal, crisp and clear, and it's much more responsive. So if I'm literally gonna click left or right, it's gonna turn the camera uh, right then and there. And you can actually zoom in up to four times. So I would highly recommend you guys look into the Summer Infant Zoom HD. Anyways guys, if you like this video review and you want to see me do more, please like and subscribe, and definitely don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Desi31.